of all my teachers at the academy, Patrick is the one that is with me. I was a student at the academy and I took, I think I took at least three courses with Patrick. Um, I'm trying to nail down the years. Uh, it might, might have been, could have, could have been as much as 10 years ago. And I took the plein air classes with him out at the Horticultural Society uh, in the springtime. I think it was three, at least three times in the spring. So I know Patrick from uh, working in continuing education at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. So I was hired there in Nine, 1999 as the associate by Neil DeSabato. He was the director. So when I started, it was just a few years after and he, you know, had all these great teachers there. So that's where I met Patrick. Um, a family lived in the house, two houses down. And uh, the couple grew up and grew to be old and then one died and the other one, the children put in a, a nursing home because she wasn't able to care for herself anymore. Mm -hmm. And the house was going to be sold as is. And I had been in it and I loved the third floor. It had great light up there. It was um, uh, open, one large big room. And even though I wasn't really an artist yet, I thought, gee, an artist should move here. And I can just see an artist with a, a, um, a paintings on the wall and the easel. And sure enough, not only one artist, but two artists moved there. Patrick and Addie. Patrick, the painter, and Addie, the sculptor, and um, landscaper, gardener extraordinaire. My name is Alan Lincoln. I was a student of uh, Patrick Arnold's in the mid to late 90s or so, or so forth. I, uh, I first met him in an urban uh, landscape painting class that he taught at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. My name is Ted Hennessy. I've known Pat Arnold since we were Boy Scouts together in Pennsylvania. Um, I was good friends with him um, all the time we were growing up, high school, junior high. Um, and I saw him, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, after that, we, uh, we never lived in the same city really, but um, when I was visiting my relatives, in Pennsylvania, I, I would always go visit him as well. When I first met Patrick, I was very young and he took me out to visit his mother, often in Huntington Valley, where she had this beautiful vegetable and flower garden. And the two of them would work in that garden and I had never seen anything like that. I learned so much from both of them, especially Patrick. And I always tied his gardening skills his cooking skills and his painting skills together as an incredible creative force that he had inside of him. And I really love that about him. I met Patrick in the late 1980s when I was running the adult and children's art classes at the Abington Art Center. Um, Angela Gonzalez from PAFA recommended him. Um, and uh, the first time I met him, I was pleasantly surprised. He was uh, very soft-spoken, thoughtful, and energetic. And um, I liked him immediately and uh, hired him on the spot. And I, I admired the spiritual side of Patrick, his love of nature, mm -hmm. you know, his belief in, in, you know, the here and now, his belief and trust 
that things will work out. But again, it wasn't spiritual in any um, rigid, rigid sense. He just had a sense about him of what was right and what was wrong and the right way to do things. You know, he's attracted to Eastern Eastern religions, but he never adopted one as a, um, you know, his the way he lived his life. He just picked up the pieces that he liked and and worked it on that way. And one of the most important things is is probably that he gave me a way to see things with an artist's point of view. He described light or the way things looked from a certain perspective as as we walked around and just, he, he would just show me things and he'd like the light in a certain way and different and. When he taught, he wasn't trying to make people paint like him. He was trying to find out what, what they were interested in or what, what kind of painter they were trying to be and help them along. His approach was distinctive hmm. because he, he was, philosophical. What came through in his teaching was his approach to living. And I, I felt that in that environment, outside, in the, in the woods and in the trees, he, he had a very strong ethic about the landscape. I'll think of Patrick and I'll, and I'll think, don't stop this. Keep keep it going and keep, you know, don't don't start a new sheet. Stay stay on it uh, and be in it. Patrick for me has endured in the way that when I sit down to draw, he's he's beside me. Of all my teachers at the academy, Patrick is the one that is with me. And, you know, I, I still meet people today who, who they s took his class back then and they always say like, what a amazing experience they had with him, like how good a teacher he was, um, you know, all these years later, so. I think the thing that I loved about Patrick was he would, he taught me how to look at the scene and work my way into it. And having him sit next to me and look at what I was looking at and teach me how to work my way into the scene. What I really like is this uh, largest drawing I have of his, that's a pencil drawing. And it's just of some bushes along a road uh, that you can just see how he developed the uh, scene through these pencil marks and how his marks changed as he got into this more and more deeply. And it's, it's not a finished painting. It, it was just probably something that of an afternoon he did. Uh -huh. And it epitomizes for me the teaching that he, he did for me. Then I'd talk to Patrick after and he'd say, oh yeah, the model didn't show up, but it's okay. We j I found a, like a dirty styrofoam head in the hallway. He was just very nonplussed about stuff. And I, I learned from him, you know, not to like freak out. I think he really cared about the student and like their progress. Patrick was a storyteller. He was one who would talk your arm off. And he had these wonderful tales and these wonderful stories, just about any and everything. Um, he went to the same barber in Center City for as long as he had been in Philadelphia, I think like 20 years. And he'd come back with wonderful stories about this barber and his relationship with this barber. He had such a visual acuity to seeing color in the landscape and in the forest and in the houses across the Manion Bridge and this great ability to translate that onto his canvas or his paper. He wasn't afraid of color, yet in some sense he was a shy, um, introverted man. He didn't like large groups. He was better like one-on-one. -on -one. So 
I love that combination of him. This, you know, yin yang, you know, very colorful and boastful almost in his paintings, large, big, and uh, quite a voice uh, for this man. I'd always say, you know, a painting is made of paint. You should use some paint on your painting. <laughs> and yet the, the mark making has a has a a flow to it that makes the scene look abstracted. Mm -hmm. But there's no question that it's of a very particular place. And Patrick taught me to use the different kinds of tools. I think the tools he used most in the later parts of his painting career were her fingers, it's his fingers especially with landscape and his delicate mixing of colors and uh, uh, placing of paint on his canvas or paper with his fingers was very enlivening in a sense, you know, and very permission giving. It's a, it's a joy to look at and is, is also a message from him to me about how, how to work. I mean, he was funny I and mean, he had the, a great sense of humor. I mean, he was very like wry. Um, for a time, he was probably the best cook that I knew. He was sort of fearless in the kitchen. He would he would make quiches. He'd make a pie at the drop of a hat. He'd bake bread before I came over or something tasty. He drove a motorcycle. He uh, sometimes looked a little scruffy, but he was never dirty. Just you know, just didn't follow their standards. I'm sad that what happened to Patrick. Oh yeah, it's it's but, a tragedy. It's the yeah. I mean, you know it's it's the tragedy of our life, uh, my life and his life, and um, it's just I uh, I cried every day for. Uh, six or seven years uh, about it. Buddy, as bright and inspirational as him, should have that kind of disease happen to them. I remember when he would go to the cherry trees by the Schuylkill and Kelly Drive, he would pick the cherries off the tree and then he'd go home and pit them, however he did that. And cherry pies, my mouth is salivating just thinking of that. 